Today we are going to discuss David Dobrik, a figure so cryptic and devious his actions are only spoken of in hushed tones behind closed doors of government officials and crime syndicates intent on world annihilation. Through unspeakable text from the Necronomicon that calls for an ancient being that will come of age before the 15th year of the 21st century and reanimate the corpses of the once deceased and foul creatures that will march across the land spreading disease with a hill of blood and damnation. Okay, it's not exactly that bad, but he is a vlogger, and as we'll see, his push for views and rat-like tendencies when shit hits the fan puts him on the level of Batman villain. The controversy, or hot water, we're going to cover today is Matt Rife with deceit, desperation, depravity, and dipshits. The four Ds. Which is a compromise, because anything more than four and you've got yourself a train. Okay, so I realize some of you may not be familiar with the massive YouTube personality, so for context, let's do a quick breakdown of David. Born July 23rd, 1996 in Kozice, Slovakia. Yeah, unfortunately, the two of us may share a genetic background. His family moved to the United States around the time he was six. And in April of 2013, David would upload his first video to Vine and continue uploading on the platform with various other creators, eventually joining YouTube in 2015. He briefly dated fellow creator Liza Koshi from late 2015 to early 2018, and in 2019 would marry Lorraine Nash, a fellow content creator Jason Nash's mother, as a comedic bit hilarious. David would eventually form the Vlog Squad, a rotating cast of content creators including himself filming their daily lives at the height of its popularity was a group of young adults living in LA promoting a lavish and unachievable lifestyle while still getting up to various shenanigans. His channel has amassed over 17 million subscribers but as of the release of this video has not been active for over a year. His content is easy to spot if you know what you're looking for. It follows a similar pattern to other massively popular creators, typically this or another stupid face plastered over a screen grab from the initial video that rarely has anything to do with the video as a whole and is used as clickbait to convince you it's worth watching. It's not. Now that's out of the way, let's discuss what David thought was acceptable to share with his audience and what he would later hide or remove to avoid accountability. Also, subscribe for more of my shit. On May 18th of 2017, David would post a Snapchat inviting females 18 and over to be extras in a video he was filming. This would be the start towards a series of events that would leave viewers wondering if this was a dark path David and company would set upon for the sake of clicks the cold reality behind the vlog squad beginning to unravel. A fan of Dobrik's would respond to a post for what she would later recount was a video about Dirty Dom, a member of the vlog squad at the time and most likely suspect in a lineup to get charged for selling PCP to preschoolers. Hell, Harvey Weinstein had a better chance of relying on his looks. But as they say, don't judge a book by its sexual assault allegations. The victim and her friends would act as extras in a video in which Dom is in need of a sex intervention. I'm not sure what message the Vlog Squad was trying to deliver, but according to most reports and even comments from some of the Vlog Squad members, none of Dom's physical interactions come with consent, so every interaction taken after this is as much on David as it is on Dom. During the night in question, Dom had cornered the victim in an act of desperation. Lacking charisma, intelligence, he decides to take what seems to be the tiny dog approach and begins f***ing her. It's only by some coaxing from a still filming David that this unfortunate victim is pulled out of this frankly embarrassing situation for such an admittedly not very attractive, poor, and feeble individual. Also the victim. Things go from backhanded comments about gender superiority and something dissolving in your rum and coke to taking an evening trip in a trunk of an unfamiliar car levels of terror in no time when only a year later, of November of 2018, the Knob Squad would upload another now deleted video in which Dave Dom decides he's going to have a fivesome. Unfortunately, he lacks charm, personality, confidence, and was cursed with the face from a children's Stranger Danger awareness video. Dom would announce that he's invited some girls over, assumably hoping his celebrity lineup of friends and some alcohol would make up for his lack of a spine or charismatic bone in his body. Things escalate after Dobrik requests that the other members purchase alcohol that the women would be encouraged to consume. Two unlucky girls would find themselves behind closed doors with Dom while Dobrik films outside the room and other members of the felony squad peek inside and give us unnecessary updates and a poor attempt at humor. One of the girls involved would later confirm that she was pressured into drinking and beyond the point of coherent thought or basic motor functions, herself and her friend were led into a room by Dom that she would later state was against what she wanted and was capable of deciding. This would all culminate in a tragic event that would leave a victim reeling from three inches worth of trauma, demoralization, and vulnerability. Dipshit. Also, sex offender. Also, for anyone thinking that I'm making light of such a heinous act of depravity from a group of individuals in a seat of power, just understand that such a traumatic experience is not something I find funny. But I will make fun of the dickheads behind this horrendous act. June 15th, 2017. 
Dobrik releases a now-deleted video titled He Thought He Was Kissing Her, in which former squad member Seth Francois would be tricked into kissing Jason Nash, a then 44-year-old comedian that apparently has nowhere else to be other than hanging out with 20-year-olds and selling himself for quote-unquote pranks. Dipshit. Seth was persuaded to participate under the guise of kissing fellow influencer Karina Kampf and would later recount the experience as being traumatizing, only recently being aware that it was in fact assault. This would follow a video Seth would create titled Accountability to All Creators, in which he would address the racism he dealt with while an active member of the Triple K squad, from referring to him as their only black friend, to offering him watermelon and a ride to the police station. Clearly, this group has attended a few Donald Trump rallies. With all this active racism, it seems David and his BLM squad were preparing for the inevitable downfall as influencers by rehearsing their lines as future LAPD officers. Finally, we come to Jeff Wittick, who seems to be the most likable member of the defunct squad still left, although several witnesses recounted him buying alcohol for the underage girls during the incident on November 2018, and that seems pretty sus. Jeff would take part in a video featuring the team wakeboarding and swinging around in a shallow lake with the help of an excavator operated by Dobrik. David would swing his friends around in a line attached to an arm of the excavator that one can assume would give them whiplash, lightheadedness, vomiting, and in some cases right-wing ideologies. Okay, that last part isn't true, but one thing that is indicative of these symptoms, a trip to Epstein Island. I'm not connecting those dots. Sometimes the truth just tends to reveal itself. Okay, back to the point. During the recording of these absurd levels of stupidity, Jeff Wittick would have his turn in an attempt to wakeboard, as Dobrik would begin to spinning the excavator, building up tension. The narrator would go off script and sip on his monster before eventually returning to his notes. Moments would fly by as though hours had passed, but within only a matter of seconds, Dobrik would halt the excavator without the forethought of slowing down, causing Jeff to slam into the side of the arm and fall into the shallow water below, his foot still attached to the line as he dangled. The scene was horrific, unless like me, you pictured a wily coyote and roadrunner skin, in which case, I nearly pissed myself. Jeff's skull was fractured in nine places. His left eye socket was fractured. Do you think he hit the window of the excavator and slowly slid down to the bottom for comedic effect? I sure hope so. His hip and foot were broken, and ligaments in his leg were torn. No, but these were very serious and life-threatening injuries that I'm not here to make light of, so let's all be a little bit more mature and take this seriously. Jeff would later state that he could have lost his eye due to the impact of the excavator. It's also possible that he may suffer from lifelong brain damage due to the incident. The combination of trauma from the incident, hospital bills, and thought of suffering lifelong brain damage on top of his clearly pre-existing damage of his prefrontal cortex, that's the part of the brain used for rational thinking. It was clear he needed to gather his two remaining neurons and put together a video exposing the truth titled The Thugs is Thugs. I'm kidding, it was titled Don't Try This at Home. A documentary about the incident and the injuries he suffered from it. Dipshit. And for those of you who are fans of the vlog squad, David Dobrik, any of the other members I've mentioned, or maybe you just think I've been unsympathetic or too harsh on them. Just know that I've reread this script 37 times and I'm completely fine with the picture I'm painting. Everyone is at fault, including me. But what a whirlwind it was, and if you made it this far, I can't wait to read your hate comments. Honestly, there's so much I've left out from interviews and podcasts, other victims of David's and the shit squad that I haven't had time to cover, and even a lawsuit for $10 million. All things I can cover in a future video, but let's see how the analytics and viewers feel first. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap this up. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, be well. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end. This will be a two-part series that I intend to have the finale out within a matter of days, so keep an eye out for updates. But until then, be well. Thank you for joining me once again. If you haven't seen my original Dobrik video, it'll be the first link in the description, and this is the follow-up. So if you don't have time for that shit, let's quickly catch you up. David Dobrik is a massively famous influencer and personality that began his career on Vine in 2013 and moved to YouTube in 2015 and has since began his Vlog Squad videos featuring his friends, those of which are a mix of influencers and celebrities alike, amassing over 17 million subscribers on his channel in total and since then has been caught up in several controversies, one of which involves David, his Vlog Squad, and a member of the latter, Dirty Dom, or as some might know him, Day Rick Dom. Various sexual assault allegations have been released against Dom, mostly during or in coordination with David's vlogs. Some of these are as much as Dom speaking inappropriately to females, groping, rubbing, and even that big one, standards and practices. Okay, we all caught up? No? I've raised more questions than I've answered? First link in the description. Now, I know I haven't discussed David's role in all this, but I could cover that in a future video. But until now, just understand that I hold him accountable above everyone else, even Rick Dom. Because not only was he aware of his behavior, but he allowed it and encouraged it to take place for the sake of his videos. 
This could be said of any controversy surrounding David and the gang. Dipshit.